Welcome to Authors Revealed. I'm Becky Anderson. We are thrilled. Owen Culver is back at Anderson's and Naperville. You'll know him because he wrote all the Artemis Fowl books and the movie's coming soon. But he's here with Iron Man, the gauntlet. He has been given permission from the Marvel Universe to write a new story about Tony Stark. You're going to love this one. Owen, welcome back to Anderson's in Naperville. Thank you. I feel I should get a bunk and you know, so <laughs> I'm here so often. I, I, I can't even get out of bed and that. do my events. It's back to bed. But I remember the first time you came and yeah. it was when Artemis was fall. It's like it had to have been like 2001. 15 years ago. And yeah. You're the same. And I, ha I haven't aged, I don't think. No. No. No, but I do. I love thank the you. beard. Thank I'm going to tell you, I love all this. Oh, it looks, thank you. It looks great. I will now keep it. Please. Uh, uh, <laughs> no. I'll show my wife this video. I'll say, tell her, tell her I really like it. A beard fan. Yeah. Okay, thank you. But when you came that time, and I can't remember what school, it might have been Jefferson Junior High you came yeah. to. The whole gym was packed. And yeah. kids absolutely love the first book in the Artemis yeah. Fowl series. And then all through all eight books, they just, yeah. they just were so... That was so intimate. scary for me. The previous book was only published in Ireland. Uh, and then suddenly you're walking into this, it was like a big tsunami of kids up on these bleachers. And it looked, and then I was just below them. It was, yeah. it felt uh, very, it was very scary, but I, I just kept talking, I just kept speaking and telling jokes and. Yeah. So and they good. loved every minute of yeah. it, but they, they were so excited. They could not wait for you to get there. So It's a great yeah. feeling. And today, yeah. you know, we, I came back and, uh, and I had a beautiful event today. It was just so sweet and nice. So it's just it's lovely to be able to know that well, whatever happens mm -hmm. when I come back to Naperville, yeah. I'm going to have a, lo a lovely time. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's and always vice nice. versa. a constant. Okay. Yes. So but you have like to the, keep coming. You're like our north star for <laughs> writers. <laughs> you need to keep writing books. <laughs> so this is a little bit different, though. Yeah. Your new book, um, The Gauntlet. So it's yeah. it's it's a Marvel superhero, Iron Man. Yeah, it's one of those things that you didn't, I didn't see coming, I didn't expect. I was at a bit of a crossroads, I just finished a series and I didn't know what, what I was going to do. Uh, and I got this phone call from my editor, would you do an Iron Man book for Marvel? Uh, and you know, we've only got four months or five months to do it, do you think you can do it? And I thought, that's perfect. Yeah. Uh, I just, it's like a holiday, I know the character, um, I know what to do. And their only problem was that I couldn't interfere with the Marvel Universe. Ah, okay. So uh, my solution to that was quite simple. I've just said, well, I'm just going to bring him to Ireland for two days. And it doesn't affect, he's no phone. He, yeah. can't, call, he can't even call his friends in America. So Even when he's inside his Iron Man suit. Yeah, he, well, that, that's the first thing I did was take that suit <laughs> no. off him. So he can't do anything and he's stuck yeah. on an island. and. Yeah. Uh, and in that way, there was no overlap and there was no knock-on, right. and uh, everybody was very happy with that. Yeah. So, you know, with, with Marvel, um, and there's been a couple other books with, by a couple of others yeah. that have done superheroes for the Marvel Universe. Margie Stoll did yeah. uh, Black Widow, and uh, she's done two, I think. Yeah, she's uh, done two of those. And that was actually why I decided to do it, because I thought, thought about it for a week, and uh, my editor said, well, um, Steph said, I'll send you Margaret's. Uh, because I was a little bit worried it might be, you know, not the highest of rent. Uh, but when I saw Margaret was involved, I, and then I read the book, I thought, oh, yeah, this mm -hmm. is a sterling. They're really, they're really getting a classy line up here. So yeah. I, I decided to do it. Yeah. So I, then you got to be pretty honored to be able to ask, to be asked yeah. to do this. And I know yeah. you've had other books that you've had yeah. this kind of same circumstance. But telling about the Marvel Universe. Yeah. So you need to follow the rules. Of, of whatever has been established for Iron for, Man as yeah. a character. You do. You, yeah. I mean, but that's also nice because usually when you start a new series or write a new book, you have to spend 
a certain amount of time establishing backstory uh, and building up the character and showing his motivations. But with this, everybody in the world knows who Iron Man is and who Tony Stark is, and you don't have to tell them anything. So I did a little bit of a flashback first, yeah. but then I just fired him out of this, into the suit like a, you know, like a catapult. He was flying across the ocean, and you don't have to say why, you don't have, everybody knows. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of liberating. Yeah, well, I, I love the back story yeah. because most people know him through the movies, yeah. and they know Robert Downey Jr. and all yeah. that. But they know from the movie, but you don't have any idea what his history is, what he yeah. was like as a kid or even a teenager. Yeah. And you put a little bit of that in there, and his relationship with his father. Which yeah. Is, well, yeah, I thought yeah. that I think that's important because that's what drives Tony mm -hmm. Stark with right. his his relationship with his father, and that's not they t they touched on that a little bit in the last movie, but yeah. this was written before the last movie, so. Uh, I didn't know that was going to happen, but I, I, put it, I wanted to tie him down in the 1980s. I thought that uh, he is now, you know, 45, 46, 47, and that's the, I mean, in, in the movies he's a bit older, so, so I thought it would be funny if he was kind of a real new romantic back in the 80s and he had the hair and yeah, he listened to Duran yeah. Duran and uh, he, he was maybe wearing a bit of eyeliner. I thought that would be very... <laughs> And it was also a way to get for people to get get, get a mental image of him, a very strong mental image. And uh, what would be more abhorrent to kind of a real New Yorker dad than this kind of yeah. this guy coming in, with, you know, with the the flouncy shirt, the pirate shirts that we used to wear back then? I it's thought that right. would be very um, that would be very annoying if your father was a very strict, square industrialist. So uh, yeah, and I thought it'd be funny, but also yeah, I wanted to yeah. show that he was desperate to please his father for, you know all that right, time that's right. what he wanted sure. to do yeah so did you have to research any of the backstory i mean the the, the movies yeah. or even the even the graphic novels or comics I, or I, anything? I i i did watch the movies again mm -hmm. uh and i did what i did read a couple of the graphic novels but uh, most of it i knew uh, because i've been reading them as a kid i mean as a yeah. teenager it was kind of the in the 1970s was one of the golden ages of marvel when you had all those Kirby doing all his amazing artworks mm -hmm. and uh, so I followed all that stuff and I liked Tony Stark because he was he had problems yeah. uh, and Spider-Man had problems they weren't they were superheroes but they also had human problems right. Right. and Tony was kind of haunted by the death of his parents but also he had addiction problems and he wasn't always the nicest of guys and I like that about him. There's yeah. like a lot of gray areas, and I I tend to be more attracted to characters. For example, I wouldn't really be interested in writing a Captain America story, right? Or a Superman story, because they're they're very very obviously heroic right. guys. Right. But Batman and Iron Man, especially oh, Iron Man, yeah. they're yeah. they have definitely have gray Those areas. Those little flaws. Yeah, and Iron yeah. Man in the comics is you know he's trying to take over the world basically, uh, so. Yeah, I was interested in that character, and yeah. also he's a smart aleck, and I, I, I well, do yeah. like. And that. you do smart aleck, and, and yeah. you're not a smart aleck at no, all. No, so I don't know where <laughs> it comes from. It's mystery. No, because he's always, and and in a way, sort of that that tool or that what, the way of being snarky and being yeah. kind of a, a smart aleck, it, it's kind of hides some of that too. Oh yeah, that's a total so defense that's, mechanism. Yeah, right. It is, and it's a sign of low self-esteem that you feel you have to be funny all the time. Right rather than just uh, being yourself and trusting that that's enough for people, yeah. you feel. But, but I think that's why we love characters like Iron Man, yeah, is that, yeah. that snarkiness and that, that way. Because you want to get behind that. Yeah. You, it has to get to a point in the book where he drops that. And if he doesn't, you know, then you're not really getting into the character. So he can be all snarky and all funny, but then eventually he has to go, okay, yeah. you're right. Yeah. <laughs> So, did you picture Robert Downey Jr. in your head when you're writing this? No. Show? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. No, Marvel. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I did. I mean, right. I think if there was ever an actor that personifies a role for a generation, it's Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. And I think the first ten minutes of the first Iron Man movie, when he's hanging out with the soldiers and he's selling his re his rockets, that changed movies in. Spe definitely superhero movies forever, but possibly movies because the movie industry since that time has become a superhero industry. Oh, sure has. You know, if you look any week, the number one movie is nearly always superhero. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's uh, yeah, 
I think if you if you think Robert Ju Downey Jr. and you read this book, you will hear his voice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I hope. So it's set in Ireland. Yeah. You know, an island off. So it was, yeah. what was it like taking it home for you? Yeah. Well, it was actually a nice way. It, it achieved two things for me. It meant I didn't have to do any research, because I, rather than drive around and have coffee in various places. <laughs> And decide right. yes, I will blow up that building, or you know, I will have a right. fight scene here. Uh, and also, it separated him from the Marvel universe, which gave me a little more freedom. Yeah. So what I wanted to do was, and it's pretty much what I did with Douglas Adams, uh, Hitchhiker, was start in his world, but then pull you into my world. So you start with the familiar, and then you bring the familiar somewhere strange. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, and I think that that works pretty well in this instance. And it was the same in Hitchhiker. We started on Earth in England, in London, and the end of the world where Douglas Adams started it. But then you're on a new planet that's populated only by Irish people. So yeah. I thought that was a nice way to do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, talking about you know, when you did the, the, you know, asked by Douglas Adams yeah. State to write the next book, number six yeah. in The Hitchhiker's Guide. Yeah. And then also you've written a Doctor Who, yeah. right? And, and thinking about yeah. Marvel and Iron Man. Is it is it daunting to, to, yeah. to write these characters that are so iconic, or, or stories, or yeah. authors and books and characters that are so loved? It is yeah. it is it is uh, yeah. daunting, especially uh, Iron Man. I mean, he is one of the most recognizable characters in fiction today. So it was, it was really nice to be asked to do it. I mean, and you do feel. I mean, I said after. Doctor Who right, that, that I don't want to be a gun for hire, you know, I want to do my own stuff. Uh, but then these things come up and it's just, yeah. wow, Iron Man. Yeah. You, can't you pass know, that it's up. very yeah. hard to pass right. that up. Yeah. I mean, I'm saying now, no, I'm done now. I'm not doing any more um, characters. I'm going to do my own stuff. Yeah. And I, that probably is true for the next, you know, few years. But I'm very easily tempted. If if a character comes up that I totally love, yeah. I, w I would find it hard yeah. not to. And if I could do it in four months or five months, uh, you know, it'd be hard to turn it down. Yeah. Well, you you have been you have over forty books I think yeah. and, that have been published, and thinking that your first book came out in ninety eight. Yeah, right? that's right. Yeah. You've been pretty busy. I have been very busy, <laughs> and I was going to take a break this year. Um, but now I have I have a lot of stuff on and. I, my wife Jackie says you were taking a break, you know. You, you have to think your health and your head. And but I have a musical on at Christmas, and I'm doing a, a picture book with P.J. Lynch, who's my oh, dear great. friend, and yeah. uh, I'm, I'm doing a graphic novel about uh, immigration from Africa to Europe, and it's it's wow. it's all uh, it's all very exciting. But what's exciting is it's all collaborations. Yeah. What Artemis Fowl did for me was it put me on a, a level that I can approach people to do stuff. Yeah. So I could go to PJ and I said, PJ, how about, uh, and at least they're going to take the call. I mean, they might not do the, the book, but I did, you know, I was able to go to Oliver Jeffers, PJ Lynch, yeah. um, Andrew Duncan, and Marvel were able, came to me. Yeah. So yeah. that's a that's a great gift of, um, of Artemis Fowl, that Artemis Fowl has given to me, that I can do that. Uh, and also, I can do you know keep going with my own stuff. But I'm at the stage in my life now where I'm trying to reach out a little bit. I mm -hmm. spent 20 years in a, in a shed, and now I want to uh, go out into the world and work with other people. Yeah, yeah. but you're doing so many other genres too. Yeah. I loved Imaginary Fred. Oh, thank which was you. So great with Oliver Jeffers. Yeah. And well, I like to give the youngsters a boost. <laughs> yeah. He, yes, was, right. he wasn't doing very well without me. And, no, not at all. Uh, those, no. those crayon books, forget oh, about yeah, those. They, they were might so. Have sold they were a dozen copies. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> it was really sad. I was sorry for him. I felt sorry for the guy. <laughs> but, but you know, picture books, these yeah. little graphic novels, yeah. and yeah. Yeah. It's well, got to be fun, though. It is fun. Well, yeah. Oliver, that's why we did it. I mean, yeah. we met in New Zealand, and I I knew Oliver was an artist, and he knew I was a writer, but that's as much as we knew. Yeah. I didn't know he was one of the top five comic, you know, picture book makers in the world. And, you know, he didn't know I'd written Artemis Fowl, so, but we oh. had a good time. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's so stereotypical. We went to a bar. We had a good time, and we said, yeah, "We should do, let's do something. This is great." And, yeah. and then we did. And then I found out who he was, and then the pressure. I said, "Oh my God, 
this guy can really write. He's <laughs> like a great writer and a great artist. So, I was like, oh. Well, it was, it was yeah. So so both worked, of you but guys, it worked yeah. out well. Oh, it worked a, out well. I love we, that. We had I a great tour. It, yeah. We had a great tour. Yeah, it was a great book. So, going back to Iron Man and thinking about Pepper Potts. Yeah. She has a small little, right? Well, Pepper Potts yeah. was, I had Pepper Potts in as, as a larger character, but yeah. I was told that, I, and I don't know why still, that, she, uh, you know, that she, that she was busy. In, yeah. the, in the Marvel, I don't know. There might be some other story going on with her in the comic book yeah. series that I don't know about. So, I had to kind of um, I had to make our part as small as possible. But you do have Saoirse Troy, right? Saoirse Troy is yeah, in there. Yeah, Troy. Yes, uh, right. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to think. I wanted to really you know Irish names are notoriously unpronounceable, and I thought people would know Saoirse now because of Saoirse, the, Saoirse the Ronan. Ronan. Yeah. Because she had just gotten an Oscar nomination, so I thought it's perfect. Yeah. Uh, so I, I hope she doesn't mind that I, <laughs> that I used her name. Yeah. And Tori is the name of an island uh, off Donegal, so I thought uh, would, I'd call her after that yeah. island. So it's your Tori. No, I, I, and we don't want to do spoilers, but I liked her character. Yeah, yeah. And you are great with character development. It doesn't yeah. matter what, good or yeah. bad or evil or whoever they are. But I liked her the way she, well, I shouldn't say yeah. what she does in the book. Yeah, she, she's, she's, she's kind of, yeah, she's. she's a, she does a little trick. As we say in Ireland, she's well able for herself. <laughs> you know, she is no pushover. Yeah. So, with Iron Man, Tony Tony Stark in yeah. Ireland, how tell us how Tony relates to the Irish and vice versa. Well, I think Tony is a bit surprised by the lack of awe that he receives. Ireland has a very different uh, attitude towards celebrity than some other parts of the world. And in all the movies and the comic books, wherever Tony Stark turns up, it's like super fandom. And I think... Marvel were very prescient in this because they anticipated the, the, the tech superstar, mm -hmm. which we have now. It's a new phenomenon where you have, you have the guy from Tesla uh, who is having these massive uh, concerts almost where he's showing the new products. You have Apple. I suppose mm -hmm. Steve Jobs was the first one, really. Uh, but now they're carrying that on. Yeah, right. And these, like, are, every time they say, and we've got a new app, it's like screaming, people are crying. Uh, and back in the 70s, Marvel kind of saw where this was going. So Tony Stark is the ultimate tech superstar. Yeah. And uh, in the States, he, he has huge, you know, he gives huge concerts. But when he comes to Ireland, nobody's impressed with that. Mm. It's like, you know, who's this, who's this guy? You know, I'm trying to feed the ducks here and he's landing in a big uh, noisy suit. And they're very almost, not insulting, but they kind of try and take him down a peg or two. And at first he's a little bit disconcerted by that, but then he realizes, actually, I really like this. They're treating me like a, a normal person and because they insult everybody. And uh, he gets partnered up with this uh, Inspector Conroy, who I think is my, one of my favorite characters, uh -huh. yeah. whose parents named him after a pizza, Diavolo Conroy. So he's, um, himself and Tony have a, uh, they have some you know, good laughs and, uh, and they end up, I think, really close friends, as is often the way with people who, who start off on different Ad sides of the yeah, yeah, adversaries. Right, right, yeah. right. Well, you know, it's interesting because in Marvel, I like the superheroes that, yeah. that develop their own powers instead yeah. of being innately. So that's yeah. Batman or Iron yeah. Man yeah. Yeah. are those superheroes that sort of create their own technology. Yeah, it's like it, yeah. it's it's brains and determination. Right. And right. I I respond to that. I mean, I think if you get an injection or you're from space. It's kind of too easy, you know, it's just yeah. happened to you. Yeah. But y if you have to really make it happen yourself, then yeah, that, that, it, that's more admirable, I think. Right, right. So, oh, when you were a teacher for yes. a number of years at pri primary school, yeah. being a teacher, and what ages did you work with? Uh, I worked with everything from little ones, you know, five-year-olds, right up to uh, university students. So I've kind of done it all, but my main area would be uh, t between 10 and 12. 10 and 12. Yeah. So, and that's kind of the age that you ended that I, up... That I still so write how for. Did, what did those kids teach you that you has informed your life as a writer? The, the main thing they've taught me is that they are very, very smart and very, very sharp. And if you can get them to relax, they can be so funny and so quick. And the biggest mistake you can make is to think, well, what I need to do now is simplify what I was thinking uh, for these kids yeah. so that they will get it because they hate that. You know, and so when I write a book, I write a book that is uh, that anybody can read, um, that 
anyone who can read it should enjoy it, but I just make it appropriate right. for for twelve year olds. So there's no excessive violence. Uh, there is some violence. It's Iron Man, yeah, but it, right. you know, there's no mass murders. There's no nothing too explicit. There's no swearing. It's but the dads and the mums should be able to enjoy it too. Yeah. Okay. So. What what would you say? I mean, your earliest memory of thinking, you know, I, I think I want to write stories. I want to yeah. write books. Do you remember yeah. what that was? And I, how old I, were you? I remember writing stories, but not really thinking that it was going anywhere or right. not having any desire to, to okay. make it go anywhere yeah. until because writers were mysterious creatures. I had never met a writer mm -hmm. um, of novels, and so I thought my little stories were just my little stories, but. There was a friend of my dad's, a guy called Billy Roach, who's a, who is current, he's a great playwright and a novelist, but at the time he was a musician, but he wrote a book. And he came to, to our house because my dad was a teacher and he thought my dad could look over it for uh, mistakes and whatever. And yeah. my dad said, sure. And, uh, and he le left the book and I said, well, can, you know, can I read the book? And he said, sure, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. But it's, be careful because in those days you had to print everything out. It's very expensive. Oh, right. You had to, it was at those old roller printers, so you had to tear the oh the yeah, yeah, yeah you had to right, tear the, the, right. the, the perforated bits off yeah, the side. Yeah, the matrix printers. Yeah, right there. so uh, <laughs> it took a long time to do that, and I, I had to do that myself as well. Um, but anyway, I read the book, and I realized I wasn't expecting it to be good because I thought, well, he can't be a real author. He's from Wexford, and I know him. Yeah. And he's a normal guy, and to my surprise and delight, it was fantastic. Yeah, and I thought. Oh my God, I could be a writer. Yeah. I could get a book. And I was about 15. Okay. And then from then on, I said, that's what I want to do. And it took me 17 years. I mean, I didn't get published early. Right. I, life got in the way. You know, I, I got, um, went to college, got a job, got married, um, had, you know, we had our first baby. Right. So worked overseas. But all the time I was writing. So I did all the school shows. I wrote plays. I, I had, four or five books that didn't get published and that because I was trying to be uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs or I was trying to be C.S. Lewis or, you know, I was trying yeah, to just right. write in another voice that wasn't mine. Yeah, sure. So it took me a long time to realize, you know what, you have to just, you can't, you're never going to be as good as those guys at being those guys. Yeah. You have to be right. yourself. Yeah. So, and when I did that, it happened, uh, very quickly then. The first publisher I sent it to took it and... And that was Benny and Omar, Benny right? Benny and Omar, yeah. yeah. Right. So yeah. it was, it kind of broke through very quickly. Yeah. And then, you know, thinking now with Artemis Fowl, with eight yeah. books, over 20-something million Yeah, I know, I know. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, I, I find it really hard to connect with that number, that that many kids have read my books. And then if you can think that maybe they gave it to someone, it could be twice that oh, number sure, that have actually read it. Well, that's that's or the whole thing. Everyone in the family yeah. might have read it. So yeah, it's a lot more uh, than that. Yeah. It is a lot more, and so so it's in, it's really incredible, and yeah. I'm I'll always be grateful to that. And hopefully, if they make the movie, it and will. that was my next question because yeah. we've been asking you that for a long time because yeah. it it's been a long it, yeah long torture torturous. Journey, but but yeah. now is it true that Kenneth Branagh is going to direct? That yeah, that is yeah. true. They, I think they're this week they're doing the final deal. They've been the kind of negotiating. I was out in LA last week uh -huh. and doing meetings. Oh, oh, the meetings. The meetings. Oh, so the I was meetings, meeting with yeah. all the studios yeah. about you know various projects and ideas and. Yeah. Uh, but one was with Disney and they're they're ready to go. They're oh, ready. that's so great. Yeah. So I, I read that it's going to be the first and the second book. And no, 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 it's, it's gonna just be... the first book. Now. Oh, just the first book? Yeah. Oh, great. I think that's better. I, I was always a bit dubious about the first and second book. Being combined into one. Because there's a lot going on in those two books, a yeah. lot going on. And it, it, to try and put them together, I think, was would make it yeah. too frenetic. Yeah. So I, I don't think you'd do either story justice there, really. Yeah, and now I read Lily James is going to be Holly Short. Is that I didn't true? know that. That would be nice. I, I know. No, and any I, idea who could be Artemis? I think they're, well, Kenneth said they're, they will have to find someone new. Yeah, you know. that would be great if yeah, there was somebody yeah, new. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, oh, that's exciting. I would be very happy with Lily James. She, yeah. she would, uh, if she was happy to cut her hair, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. But she would be great. She would yeah. be great as Holly. Okay. So, um, just wanting to know, I know you mentioned a few things that you're you're doing new, yeah, yeah. but um, 
any, you know, I loved Airman. That was yeah. one of my favorite books of yours. Yeah, thank that you. Standalone. Yeah. And, I, and I'm just wondering, are you thinking about writing any more standalone novels? Yeah, I think I will like be that? doing standalones for the, yeah. for the next while. Um, I don't want to dive back into the series again. Yeah. So at the moment, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm just doing ideas at the moment. So mm -hmm. uh, I have a couple of ideas and I'm, I'm going to play around with them for a few months. Uh, I have, I'm in the theatre at the moment with a play and a musical, so I'm kind of, I'll be there until next summer, uh, and then I'll probably do a bit of a tour for the graphic novel and the picture book. So it could be this time next year before I get to okay. sit down. Well, and you write get a lot of stuff. Going, yeah, so. sit down yeah, and write a yeah. novel. But I love the age group and I love the the world. I love the people, the bookstores, librarians. So. I would yeah. like to stay in this world if yeah. I can. Well, we, we want you to. You can't leave. Sorry. <laughs> you you have leave. no choice. Hotel okay. California. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> okay, so I end these interviews with a little quiz. So oh, okay. they're all book related, so you know the answers. Oh, okay. No pressure. Oh. So it's whatever comes to mind first. Okay, all right? okay. So it's kind of like, it's like Jeopardy, but yeah, I won't yeah. play that annoying music. Okay. okay. All right. that's good. Now the music is in my head. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I knew it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what was your favorite book when you were a child? Huckleberry Finn, not Tom Sawyer. Huckleberry Finn, Finn. Was, was my favorite, yeah. Okay. How about when you were a teenager? Do you remember something that... Was when really I was a favorite? teenager, the Hitchhiker's Guide series. Okay, uh, yeah. Those first two especially, they really um, uh, connected with me and they informed how I wrote, really. You know, the okay. way I write, even to this day. The kind of slightly ludicrous... So it was easy for you to write that number six, then? In some well, it was kind of a fate. Not, it was like a full circle, really, right. going back to yeah. that. And, uh, yeah, I was, it, I was amazing to do that, uh, oh. and terrifying, also. How about something when you were at university that you remember that has stayed with you? you oh, read? well, when, when I was at university, I think I, I really liked uh, James Joyce, and there was one of his books of short stories is called Dubliners. Uh, and that, uh, oh. I really... That was... I was blown away by that, and I still am. I still go back to that a lot. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it, it, it. That's so good that you kind of it makes you want to give up, <laughs> and also keep going at the same. You know, you right, don't know if right. I should stop or should I try harder. Yeah. one of those two. Okay, have you ever faked reading a classic? Ulysses, I may have. Well, oh, good. That's always my choice. Yeah, Ulysses. even though you love the Dubliners, you yeah. know, and I've heard some authors say that they faked reading the Dubliners. Yeah, so. <laughs> no, I have. Read, I've read Dubliners, okay. but Ulysses was just too much. Okay, if, if you could live in the world of any book, and it doesn't have to be permanently, yeah, but yeah. just to visit, what, what 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 world would that be? I think it would probably be, you know, I would probably have to do Sherlock Holmes okay. there, you yeah. know, and, and I, if I could be Watson, I think, and He's just more fun. observe the great yeah. man at work. Mm -hmm. uh, I think being Sherlock Holmes would be too much pressure for me. Yeah. I like yeah. to sit at the side in the armchair and just yeah. smoke my pipe and, and, and uh, make observations. And what are you reading now, or read recently, that you really uh, What am I, whatever, I just finished reading a Michael Crichton book, uh, Eaters oh. of the Dead, yeah. which yeah. I really enjoyed. I think he was kind of a, a master storyteller. Mm -hmm. He was very high concept, and he could change his st writing style. Uh, he wrote that whole book in the style of an old discovered manuscript of uh, Ibn Fadlan, of the of emissary of the Caliph of uh, Baghdad. And so he sustains that for the whole book. Right. And it's a retelling of the Beowulf legend. It's supposed to be what actually happened, you know, that the Beowulf legend is based on. And I love that book. Yeah. I, absolutely, I absolutely yeah. love it. And I also read, speaking of Sherlock Holmes, uh, a Sherlock Holmes mystery, The Final Solution. By oh, Michael Shabon, right? Which I adored. That it's a, just a novella, really, but yeah, uh, yeah. it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful book. So I would highly recommend those. Okay. Two. Oh, yeah. great. Okay. A plus, hundred percent. Yay! No, you first time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my right, birthday right. plus. Right. Well, Owen, thanks so much right, for sitting you. down and talking with me. Congrats on the gauntlet. And Iron Man. I know, yeah. I know. I just if I wish they could give me a suit, I could. Fly, I know that would be so cool. Fly back to Ireland, but <laughs> right. no offers so far. Right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Great conversation with Irish writer Owen Colfer. You'll remember him from the great series, those eight books of the Artemis Fowl series. The movie's going to be coming soon, but he's here because Marvel Universe has given him the permission to write a new story about Iron Man, and the book is called The Gauntlet. Thanks for joining me on Authors Revealed.